Welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host Scotty McCoy and I have a wonderful guest on the phone right now. I have the beautiful and talented Melanie Kinnaman and she was a final girl in Friday the 13th Part 5 A New Beginning. She played Pam Roberts. Hi Melanie, how you doing? Hi, great. How are you, Scotty? I'm doing great. I'm so excited for this interview. I was really nervous. Greg told me so many great, amazing things about you, and I was super excited to have you on uh, on my show. That's so nice. That's <laughs> so nice. Well, thanks for having me. No problem. I'm so glad that you could join me. Um, so the first question I got for you um, is nothing regarding Friday the 13th, but it, oh, actually, uh, yeah, um, how did you get your start into acting? Uh, I started out as a singer-dancer. Okay. And uh, so I did a lot of shows in New York on stage, and uh, then I got some commercial. I always wanted to be an actress, but uh, singing and dancing got me on the stage, and I started doing commercials. So I got to act in commercials, and then I started getting parts in plays, and then I got a lead in a play off Broadway, and it went from there. Awesome. That's great. Um, so, uh, what was your audition like for Friday the 13th, Part 5? Uh -huh. Well, it was very interesting. You know, <laughs> first I didn't know what it was about because they kept it secret. But I had an idea when I went in for the audition and Frank Mancuso Jr. asked me to, uh, to improv a mur that I was being murdered. <laughs> so, I prepared myself and did that. And when I finished... I was lying on the floor, as I remember, and I looked up at the desks. There were Danny Steinman and Frank Mancuso Jr. and the casting people all staring at me with their mouths hanging open. So I thought to myself, well, I either did really well or really bad. <laughs> and uh, they were very happy, and they called. So uh, were, you, uh, were you asked to return for Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives? And if so, uh, what happened that it didn't actually happen? Well, when I got Part 5, I got a contract for part five and six. Okay. So I was signed on to do two. Uh, needless to say, I was very excited about that. Mm -hmm. So when we wrapped part five, we were going to take a month and a two or two off and go into part six. Mm -hmm. So I thought we were ready to go. And I got a, my agent got a phone call from Paramount saying that things are changing because John Shepard, it was... John Shepard and I were, were signed on to do two. John Shepard had a change of heart and decided he was not going to do any more horror films, okay. that he was done. So he refused to do part six. Okay. So they were going back and forth trying, trying to figure out how they were going to continue because it was supposed to continue after the last shot of part five. Part six was going to pick up right there and continue the story. Right. So they couldn't do that without John, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they had to scrap the whole thing and cast all new people, change the story that they had written hmm. where John was going to take over the Jason thing. And they had to bring back, as you see in part six, it's Jason and, and a new Tommy and all of that. So right. that's what happened. Okay. Much to my dismay, that's what happened because I was scheduled to do both films and it would have been a really great thing for me. I agree. Uh, I'm actually going to throw in a bonus question. Uh, I always, you know, the next if they come to a settlement or an agreement with this lawsuit and everything, there would be a, uh, a there it would be nice to have like you know the thirteenth movie in Friday the Thirteenth series. Um, yeah. I I always said there should be two different movies. One should be in the snow, but I would love to see all of the final girls return and try to finally take care of Jason once and for all. If that were to happen, yeah. would you come back? Awesome. That would, I, would, I would be honored to come back. <laughs> that would make my day seeing you come back. And hopefully Pam would be the one to uh, be the final survivor. But don't tell anybody else. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. That would be awesome. Uh, so what was the best? And I have yep. the ability to do it. I have the ability to take him. Yes, you do. You do. You definitely <laughs> do. <laughs> and plus, I mean, nobody else could uh, defeat Jason. But let's be honest, Pam didn't really have her have a fair shot at Jason. She I had didn't, Roy. I wasn't given the chance. I didn't have a crack at him. Exactly. I got, <laughs> I got this guy Roy. Who the hell's Roy? I'm, I could take down Jason. Instead, I'm stuck with some guy. Exactly. <laughs> Any guy off the street. <laughs> right? Exactly. Give me some guy named Roy. <laughs> 
<laughs> what was the best part about filming Friday the 13th The New Beginning and what was the worst? I would regret not asking this question. I know you answered it a bunch of times. I've seen it in interviews before, but I still need to ask it. What is the story behind that disappearing pink sweater? <laughs> so awful. <laughs> I shot everything with the sweater on, and then when it was supposed to come off, it came off logically as you're running, and it's raining. I ditched the sweater, and the continuity screwed it up. In other words, they, they took cuts, and the continuity and the editor didn't use the scenes that were continual without the sweater. They were bringing back parts they liked well after the sweater was gone. So it's the editor. He brought, this, he didn't care. Right. He just put in parts that he liked, whether I had that sweater on or not. Right. Crazy. Boy, it is crazy. Crazy. It is. And my big, my big complaint about <clears throat> this is, this is Paramount Pictures. Right. You don't make those kind of mistakes. <laughs> exactly. Yep. It's a simple continuity 101. You don't do it. Right. And there was so much footage, Scotty. There was so much stuff shot of that, that rain sequence, in mm -hmm. the in, running in the rain, and the, the chase scenes. There's so much film, you didn't ever have to go back and use the stuff that had the sweater in it. Right. Oh. So... To this day, it baffles me right. how that was allowed. Because <sighs> believe me, I know the work that I had done. They didn't need to go back and get some of those shots with the sweater that was already taken off. Right. And it's funny because... It's not like oops, they sorry. were short on footage. They right. had so much footage. <laughs> oh, my God. That's insane. And it's funny because I have my own production company, and we just finished our first full feature. And uh, it's a horror comedy. And um, one of the we, were, we when we finished filming and uh, our edit, my our editor was going through uh, through it with me and one of my executives and we were looking at it and uh, we were looking at it being chopped up and uh, the one scene is where me and a couple of my friends in the movie were running to go after uh, the character's name is Relic which spells killer backwards uh, we were going okay. after him and uh, we were chasing him and in the one scene one of the actors uh was wearing a uh i believe it was a red shirt i want to say and then uh w and then in the next scene he, he was wearing a white shirt when he was in the woods and i'm like wait what happened i'm like did his sh shirt change how did his shirt change so we we i'm like go back a little bit and we look and i'm like oh my god he wore a freaking different colored shirt <laughs> I'm like, oh, and it's too late to film it now because it was, it's called Samhain. It's supposed to be happening in the fall time, and we're editing this in, like, December, January. <laughs> so all the leaves are already gone, so it would definitely look like a totally different area when it was chopped up. It was just better. Like I'm just like, hopefully nobody will notice. And if they are, everybody loves Easter eggs at this point. <laughs> just, just let them rip it apart. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Yep. Yeah. The, 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 the amended answer to it, question what is the worst part of Friday the 13th part 5 for me was that sweater <laughs> appearing disappearing and appearing that's yeah. the worst part yeah oh that is that is crazy I'm not joking <laughs> it just came to me the next time anyone asks me that question the worst part is that sweater and it, who cares about the flu you'll get over that that pink sweater is living on forever in that movie uh, Right, and it's not even—it's not even a pretty sweater, right? It's not even a it's pretty pink sweater. <laughs> hideous, as hideous as my hair was in that movie. Hideous. <laughs> oh my God, I'm. Two hideous things. I'm loving my this hair interview. And that sweater. <laughs> I'm loving this interview. You have me laughing here. You have me dying and over here. My pants and my pants in the first shot, the first part of the movie, and those giant pants they put me in, and then that damn pink sweater. And my hair throughout that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you have me dying here. I can't wait to talk to Greg after this. After every, I've been I, having. I, I said to 
myself, thank God they hosed me down. Because now I look slightly better. Hey, you looked really good when you were hosed down, right? <laughs> well, at least they've hosed down that horrible hair. Yep. The energy they gave me, I don't know where that was from. I never had hair like that until I did that movie. <laughs> uh, so they hosed down the hair and that saved the day. Yeah, exactly. And wouldn't it be something, though, because of all the continuity, especially with that pink sweater and everything, if, like, it's raining out, but you didn't, you weren't even wet? Yeah, well, that, I'm, I'm surprised that didn't happen. <laughs> that out, Scotty. Yeah, oh. thanks for putting that out. Luckily, they didn't do that. Exactly. Yeah, that's so, so that's a that's blessing. Next, she's walking around and no, no, she's not wet at all. It's just pouring rain. <laughs> that is yeah, too funny. Right. Well, they couldn't get that wrong. I was wet for three weeks. That is true. You know, how do you get that wrong? I'm wet in 90% of the film, so they couldn't get that wrong. But that sweater, I did not need that sweater. Yes. That sweater should have not been in that movie. My yeah. hair should not have been in that movie. You should have been wet from the opening of the, of the movie, right? The first time yeah, you were seen. My, my, my own hair should have been in that movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. boy. Oh, boy, that sweater. <laughs> <laughs> the next question. Uh, so the last question I have is, can you uh, tell the listeners um, of any future projects that you're working on or anything you would like to promote? Because um, and I do know that you're also doing uh, a stand-up comedy, from what uh, Greg told me. So if you yeah. want to also talk about that. Yes. Well, I've been doing a comedy around town, and I got cast for a pilot for Netflix, okay. where I play uh, an actress who is trying to reinvent herself. So she starts doing stand-up comedy, and she becomes a successful comic. Okay. Uh, this project is in the works. There's a famous actress who's going to play the lead in it, so I can't really talk about it, but Netflix is interested, so we're shooting the pilot for that. We were in the process of doing it, and then the shutdown of the, uh, of the state came down. That It was stay at home in California for COVID-19. So, mm-hmm. so none of the studios are shooting. Everything is closed down, including Netflix. But I am working on that Netflix pilot when everything comes back up. So I'll be able to talk about that more. But it's a very interesting, it's a very funny pilot. It's a comedy and it's about three women at three different stages of their life, three different ages. Awesome. And, uh, yeah. So I play the divorcee who's an act, been an actress her whole life and she's now trying stand-up comedy. So it, um, and I got that from them coming to see me perform at the comedy store. So, uh, awesome. Well, congratulations uh, on that. Thank you. So that's in the works, and I do my one-woman show, which has also stopped right now due to the situation in America. Mm-hmm. But um, everything hopefully will kick up for all of us soon. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm supposed to be appearing at Flashback Weekend in Chicago. It's my favorite convention. And that's July 31st through August 2nd, but we're now on hold I don't know when that's going to happen. If it doesn't happen at the time it's supposed to happen this summer, they will going. They're, they will postpone it and probably have it in the fall. Okay. So at some point, I will see everybody in Chicago at Flashback Weekend. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Melanie, for uh, giving me your time. It was a pleasure talking to somebody like you. You're so amazing. You're so talented. You're beautiful. You're at a you're oh, a great person. Nice. So I'm very very grateful to have somebody. And I'm not gonna lie, I was very nervous to do this interview. Um, not oh. because I was a, I was afraid of you as a person, because I know you're a sweetheart. I was just I, I'm just so starstruck with you because you're so beautiful and you're so talented in Friday the Thirteenth, and it's one of my favorites in the franchise. So just seeing you and having you on my show is such an honor for me, and I thank you for that. Well, it's an honor for me to talk to you and to and to have a chance to. Uh, have the fans hear what what my take is on Friday the Thirteenth, and, yeah. and to have some insight. I mean, it's fun for them to hear the some of the behind the scenes stuff. So exactly. It's my honor to do that, and and I'm very grateful for the fans and their constant loyalty and their mm-hmm. interest in not only the franchise of Friday the Thirteenth, but their interest in me and my career. I I'm very grateful for that. Yes. Been very loyal. Exactly. And I'm grateful to you. Thank you for, for inviting me on your show. Thank you. I, it is definitely my honor. Um, for anybody that wants to find out about Melanie Kinnaman and what she's up to, you heard it here on Slasher Scotty, and you can also check out her IMDb page to keep updated on any film products she has in the works. Yes, I just did an episode of uh, SEAL Team. So, awesome. So um, that's on CBS, and that will be uh, aired after the whole shutdown. Awesome. Sounds great. You heard that, everybody. So check out, check that out on CBS. 
Thank you so much, Melanie. It's been an honor. Thanks, Scotty. All right. You have a great uh, rest of your night. Be safe. Thank you. And Same to you. We'll see, some, we'll see each other sometime in the near future. I would love that. All right. Okay. Yep. Bye.